So essential number six is to repair your body with therapeutic plants. There are literally hundreds of different foods and herbs that can suppress cancer cells, kill cancer cells, and boost your immune system. Um, I refer to some of these as uh, tumor terminators, for example. Uh, one, an example for that would be bloodroot. Bloodroot has uh, an alkaloid or plant compound in it that's called sanguinarine. And this sanguinarine has selective toxicity. It kills cancer cells without touching the healthy cells. High doses of proteolytic enzymes build the immune system, kill cancer cells. Simple things like curcumin. You know, there's over 200 studies that show the effect of curcumin on cancer cells. Uh, they kill cancer cells, they stop the cancer cells from producing their own blood flow, they decrease inflammation, they boost natural killer cells. I mean, it's a very, very powerful food. Um, another example is broccoli sprouts. The, um, the compound in broccoli sprouts is called sulforaphane. Sulforaphane does the same thing. You know, over 60 studies go to you know, pubmed.org, the United States Library of National Medicine, where you can see all these studies. And sulforaphane kills cancer cells, stimulates glutathione production. It uh, increases the effectiveness of phase one, phase two detoxification of the liver, uh, affects the um, metabolism of estrogen because there's the good estrogen and the bad estrogens, and so it helps to, you know, metabolize that. And, you know, there's literally, as I mentioned, hundreds of different herbs that you can look at to really help boost your immune system and selectively kill cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And what would be our seventh essential step? So essential number seven is to adopt very early detection. You know, a lot of the traditional tests that are in mainstream medicine allow you to discover cancer when it's a large tumor, when it's a lump or a bump, and even in the blood test, you have to have a very high tumor load to pick up some of these cancers. So wouldn't you like to know five to eight years, sometimes 10 years ahead of time, that perhaps there were cancer cells that were developing in your body? One of the tests that I like to use is thermography. Thermography reads the infrared heat coming off the body. Cancer begins where there's inflammation, and where there's more cancer cells, you're going to see more inflammation, more blood flow, which is going to give off more heat, which is going to show up on a thermogram. Now, you can't diagnose cancer with a thermogram, but it gives you an indication of the type of inflammation and, and what's going on in the body physiologically. There are other blood tests that you can use. One of them that I like to use is called HCG. It's actually a, a pregnancy hormone. People think of that as HCG, but it's also a hormone that cancer cells produce. So as cancer cells are secreting this hormone, if the hormone is found in higher levels, then we know that there's cancer activity in the body. Another great test called the TK1 enzyme test. It's been around for 30 years, used in 30 countries, hundreds of peer review studies. And the TK1 is an enzyme that is produced when there's DNA replication in cancer cells. So if you see high levels of TK1, then we know that there's cancer activity. And again, you know, these tests are extremely sensitive because I've seen many women who have full blown out cancer, stage one through four, and some of their traditional cancer markers are within normal range. So, you know, those aren't very they're not a very good way to be able to manage your protocol and to see how you're progressing. So very, very important to get specific with early detection and some sensitive tests to see what's going on.